everyone, welcome back. I'm Melissa Pineda and today I will be discussing the book Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, Techniques for Retraining Your Brain by Professor Jason Satterfield. So he is a professor at the University of California. This was published in 2015 and it's actually a compilation of 24 of his lectures. So they made it into a book. So you can get it in actual book form like paperback or you can listen to it in um, audio book format and that's what I did. I listened to it and uh, it was great. Very educational, very informative. You absolutely feel like you have taken a university course and I feel like I have a really good grasp on uh, CBT. That's what we're going to call it uh, from now on. So um, yes, yeah, so CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, and uh, I'm going to dive right in. We can discuss um, what that is, what that looks like, and uh, who could benefit uh, from this type of therapy. Professor Satterfield starts his lecture off with a discussion around mental health, about the stigma, about the fact that one out of every four people will be diagnosed with a mental health illness of some sort over their lifetime. And he also talks about um, the idea of like promoting a discussion on mental health. I think this has gotten a lot better since 2015 and continues to improve. It seems as though people, you know, within the past like nine years since this was published have been, been like a lot more willing to talk about it, really open with it. Um, I know myself as a mom too, um, just seeing that change in the past nine years about um, discussing even like postpartum depression, for instance. Um, yeah, it just seems like there's more of an awareness out there for mental health issues, more of an understanding too, and a lot of compassion there. So anyway, that's just an aside, but so he does discuss this. Um, he also talks about the idea of CBT. So the idea behind it is that like you will essentially become your own therapist. It's not like there's, there's an end in sight when you start CBT. It's not like, okay, you're going to start CBT and you're in for the long haul. It's, there's always like some sort of a, like a time limit, really a, a goal, at least in that respect. So the idea is to give you a toolbox and the counselor or the therapist is going to give you this toolbox and you're going to learn how to use it to help yourself um, going forward. So it's collaborative and transparent between the patient and the therapist. Um, Satterfield says that basically they collect data from the problem based on the patient's real world situations and then come up with a treatment plan together uh, along with a time frame. Um, he says that um, the steps and all rationale for the steps is all transparent. Um, nothing is hidden from the patient and the goal as a CBT therapist is to teach the patient to be their own therapist eventually. CBT is empirical. So Satterfield says that the idea is that there's a hypothesis there as to why someone is a certain way. Um, and that hypothesis is created between the therapist and the patient. And then um, that person goes out and tests it in, in the real world. So let's say Jim is really anxious in social situations. Then um, they come up with a, like an idea or like a test. Okay, let's go test this out. You know, for instance, you'd uh, go to work and you have to speak to two people today um, at work while you're at work, something like that. And then if, if it doesn't work out the way that they had planned, then they come up with the next hypothesis and then the next like homework assignment uh, and then that has to be tested. Um, there's also that time element involved. So the 12 to 24 um, sessions is the norm depending on insurance and on severity, uh, Satterfield says. And it's very much focused. CBT is focused on the present. So it's where you are now, how you feel now. Um, you only talk about the past if it's absolutely necessary. That's very top down. So you deal with the present being the top and then you dig deeper to understand the individual. You go like down into the past, back into the past if it's necessary. Uh, if it's not helpful to go into the past and talk about painful experiences, then it's not done. 
Satterfield talks about how CBT has its roots in Socratic philosophy and how they use the Socratic method, the idea of asking a lot of questions, um, and then the patient kind of arrives at the answer themselves. Um, there's self-monitoring involved, um, the idea of you know getting a journal or diary and writing things down, writing feelings that um, the patient comes up with or, or has that come up uh, during the day, um, triggering events like what has triggered uh, them to feel a certain way, for instance, so to write all that stuff down. And then, as discussed, the therapist and the patient come up with a treatment plan together. Everything's kind of collaborative. And it's not the event that troubles us, but the view that we take of the event. Like, that's the whole idea. So it's not so much like the, the event itself that is upsetting for somebody uh, or that caused them pain or anguish. It's the way that we look at the event. So it's kind of like examining, it's the lens that we use. And then CBT helps the individual examine that event um, through that lens, but through different lenses too. So to sort of arrive at like, you know, all right, like why were you looking at a certain event that way? Or how were you looking at it? And how could you look at it differently, for instance, something like that. And um, Satterfield says that we boil it down to basic core beliefs of how we see ourselves and the world. So it's really, it, it was really neat the way he did this lecture series because what he did is he interviewed three different people struggling with mental health issues and that were undergoing CBT and they were undergoing it with him. So he was the one helping him and he had these interviews kind of throughout the lecture series where he'd reintroduce these people and you could see the progression so it was over like a six month period of time and he would interview them periodically and get them to do certain exercises he would go over breathing exercises for instance in the lecture series you know how to and he would discuss different um, worksheets that you could use too and a lot of it is provided in these lecture series well all of it is and he tells you where to get them what websites to get them from what to google things like that so it's very hands-on and basically when you're reading it or listening to this book you can try out these techniques at the same time which was really neat Satterfield talks about a thought record so he says that thoughts are not true or false, they're helpful or they're hurtful. So they're an opinion or an attitude, a skill set. And what he would encourage uh, people uh, while he's treating them with CBT to think of is that I am different than my thoughts and my emotions. I can choose to pay attention to them or I can choose to just let them pass me by. And this kind of goes hand in hand with other things I've read on um, self-help in this sense where y there are no good or bad feelings or emotions. They're just comfortable ones and there are uncomfortable ones. And, and this is the idea, you know, they're helpful or hurtful ones. They're comfortable, uncomfortable. They're not true or false. So there's a lot of times, you know, the person judges themselves on, oh, I shouldn't feel this way. That, that's not it. It's just like it might be a helpful emotion to feel at that time um, or it might not be. Uh, and then we have the power, you know, as individuals to uh, either focus on them and pay attention to what we're feeling or just let it go. So the idea of acceptance and mindfulness, uh, those are two things that are promoted uh, through CBT. Uh, you really have to just accept how you feel. That's like the first step before uh, anything else. You know, it's not going to be helpful if you're just judging yourself for how you feel or for what you're struggling with and going through. And CBT is used to treat so many different mental health illnesses, uh, depression, anxiety, uh, anger, um, social anxiety, like like different elements. Oh, sleeping too, any sort of sleep issues, insomnia, uh, PTSD. It's used for so many things. And uh, what they do usually, uh, Satterfield says, is they do stress assessments, of course. Uh, is the stress acute? Is it chronic? If it's chronic, how long has it been going on for? What can you change and what things can't you change? 
So for instance, um, one of the people that he interviewed um, throughout these lecture series, uh, she was dealing with a spouse that had Alzheimer's. Uh, that's something that's out of her control. She can't change. What she can change is how she handles things. You know, is she caring for herself? Is she, um, why is she depressed? Like he kind of goes into these things with her and, um, and it's really neat just the way he does it and how you can see this progression and her kind of figuring things out for herself with his assistance. You know, he's giving her these tools, breathing techniques, um, mindfulness, uh, journal, uh, baby steps always seemingly. That's a some way a way that I would describe that. Just little baby steps. You know, she for instance would just completely cut out her social life. She even stopped really talking to her kids or grandkids. She just would sit there. She would take care of her husband and she would just sit there in their house and like stare out the window for hours. And so he was able to walk her through baby steps of kind of getting her life back. CBT deals with coping behaviors and different mechanisms. Um, also having a support network. So this is something that's important as well. Uh, deep breathing like I talked about. Um, Satterfield talks about diaphragmatic breathing. Also the idea of systematic desensitization. So this was uh, interesting. So putting yourself in stressful situations like public speaking, for instance, if that's something that you struggle with or uncomfortable situations, but obviously situations that aren't enough to like traumatize the individual. Um, just to slowly introduce the person to situations where they are uncomfortable and where they get to work at overcoming the feeling of anxiety, for instance, in, in situations where they'd have to speak publicly. So again, baby steps. Um, behavioral experiments um, are also promoted with CBT. And I'm just smiling because uh, in one of the people that he interviewed throughout the lecture series um, had a lot of social anxiety and it was um, sweet. He told her to just walk to work and say hi to somebody like smile, make eye contact and say hi. And at first, like it was, she was, all these people were like obviously willing participants and they were willing to try whatever he suggested, but she was like, okay, I don't know how this is going to go. And she's like, oh, I said hi to, um, uh, maybe a 10 or 11 year old boy. Um, uh, he was walking his dog and then the CBT, well, Satterfield would say, okay, you know, how did that go? Well, you know, he said hi back, so it went well. And then, you know, later I, um, I saw, um, a little old lady and she seemed non-threatening enough and it was just, yeah, it was funny. That's why I was smiling, but, uh, it was nice to have those real world kind of, um, examples and, and hearing someone and their voice, it was neat listening to it because it was actually, you could you know, listen to this person being interviewed and talk about, um, just these struggles that they were having and and yeah and baby stepping it so it was quite interesting um, and Satterfield says that what you do matters so there's a vicious cycle of depression depression is a vicious cycle so usually he's saying when you're depressed you don't um, feel like doing anything and then the less that you do um, you just like that that's the cycle like you don't feel like doing anything so you don't do anything and then you feel worse and then you just do less of what you were doing and then you do less you know you keep isolating yourself and and it just um, yeah you just self-fulfilling prophecy in that sense and it uh, it doesn't end well so he's saying you know the more you do of what you used to do um, the better you feel. So this woman that had the sick spouse, uh, she cut her social life out completely. And um, also she used to go on hikes and biking and stuff with her husband who's now sick, so he can't. And so um, she just started reintroducing a little bit of exercise, just getting out of the house, asking for help, um, seeing uh, her friend that she hadn't spoken to in a very long time, but a really good friend of hers, seeing her once a week. And it's just like, like snowballed, you know, like one little thing and then that led to another thing and that led to another thing and little by little she was walking her way back to the person that she used to be. Satterfield says that CBT is all about finding evidence for and against. So uh, finding evidence to support the facts and thoughts that you tell yourself and evidence to show that you're wrong. So for instance, if somebody um, thinks to themselves, I, you know, I'll always be alone. 
okay, well, let's find evidence to support this. And often the person sees that there is actually no evidence to support this. Like there's no real evidence to say that, no, you're right. You'll just, you'll never get married and you'll never have kids and you'll never have the life that you want. Um, so it's interesting. They're just kind of working um, from that perspective. Um, and then the more you do this, he says, the better you get at it and the less time you waste on negative energy and on things that aren't actually factual at all. Like it's incredible. He's saying how often we do this to ourselves. You know, we feed this negative stuff in, in our, into our minds. Like we put it in our minds that we can't do something or something, you know, that we tell ourselves to believe that it's not even like based on anything to begin with. So he sort of teaches um, people to examine their thoughts and you know find evidence for it and then if you find evidence for it like there's actual evidence proving that you will always be alone okay but you know he's like i'd like to see that so um he also talks about um a cbt being all about balance so it's not about um like never thinking negative thoughts he says sometimes you know they're uncomfortable feelings um they can actually be useful so self-management uh, for chronic diseases, um, he says CBT really works well for too. So managing chronic diseases. Um, he, he talks about though how like CBT is often used alongside medication. So it's not like CBT is can always replace medication. Also depending on like what um, chronic disease we're talking about, right? Chronic pain, for instance. Um, but insomnia, chronic insomnia, He's saying CBT has been proven to be really effective um, at dealing with. So he was saying with insomnia, you should only use your bed for sleep and for sex. Uh, get out of bed if you can't fall asleep within 30 minutes and then go do something relaxing. Like don't go watch TV and don't don't go like on your phone or anything like that. But, you know, go read a book or go make some tea or something like that. Um, CBT can also be helpful for alcohol abuse. Uh, again, the self-monitoring really comes into play here. Um, writing things down, keeping a journal of your behavior and your thoughts surrounding those behaviors. Satterfield ends the lecture series uh, with a look at the three patients he had that he had been helping. And they had definitely improved significantly, but I also liked how it wasn't like, oh great, now we're all better and you know, we're good to go. It was very like real. Um, they had improved, they had the toolbox, they knew what tools to use when they were feeling depressed or anxious or angry. Um, they had each uh, suffered with like one of those things and um, basically he taught them how to be their own therapist. He also suggested though um, like bi-yearly checkups, uh, check-ins uh, to follow up, um, also to contact him uh, if they felt like they needed to see him um, earlier than their scheduled visit. Um, so he said, you know, like the idea is yes, to provide the patient with the tools um, so they can uh, be their own therapist, but obviously to get help if you need it and just almost as like maintenance sort of. He also talks about how um, if you want to try it, like he said, a lot of people want to try um, sort of like the self-help route initially. Uh, sometimes costs is a factor. Sometimes people don't like talking about um, how they feel and they don't want to go to a therapist. So he helps in that sense too. He discusses, okay, like this is what you'd want to look for with self-help books or this is what you'd want to look for um, for different um, uh, technology apps, for instance, uh, different things that you can use online um, in terms of self-help tools um, for dealing with different um issues, uh, mental health illnesses and, and issues and things of that nature. So he talks about that and then he says, however, if you, you know, are looking to find um, a cognitive behavioral therapist, then this is what you'd also want to look for. So it, it's, a, it's a great lecture series, a great book, um, great intro uh, and look into CBT and uh, and how it can help so I was curious about it and I'm glad I checked it out if any of what I've said you find interesting you might want to do the same and if you have any questions or comments please leave them below also don't forget to like subscribe if you haven't already and um, until next time